well generated by the industry and converted to hydro now uh, the advantage of biological process is that it operate at ambient temperature and atmospheric pressure thus uh, less energy intensive environmentally friendly can utilize the renewable energy resources which are in exhaustion and this is the this is the this is the reactions that uh, how the reactions take place you can see that in, in case of bowen by light dependent process by photolysis i told you it is a water molecule that uh, dissociated to hydrogen and oxygen and this oxygen or cause some kind of inhibited effect to either high iron iron hydrogen is enzyme and uh, this is the reaction carbon monoxide also in presence of water is produced hydrogen and carbon dioxide and for the fermentation process i told you organic material can be converted to hydrogen again we have the light penetration problem now dark fermentation problem we uh, process we find that it is very unique because uh, one mole of glucose can produce two mole of the acetic acid and four moles of hydrogen this is, can be easily converted to hydrogen and microbial electrolysis cell the reaction is given to you now today i want to uh, I, i want to give uh, uh, emphasize on the dark fermentation process that we find this is the process to be with us in the future so uh, uh, this process obviously had uh, operated in absence of light it doesn't require any kind of sunlight and this is the kind of typical reactions that we have that uh, in our uh, in our living system when we take glucose when the glucose completely oxidizes it produces six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water same thing happens if you if you bond glucose in presence of air you will have the similar reaction this is called complete oxidation process the difference between the biological system and non biological system is that when you burn it you get the heat energy which you can feel it but in case of your living system when you take glucose when during degradation the glucose to carbon dioxide and water it produces a lot of uh, energy molecules like atp nadh apd and that is uh, that is the energy molecule that you use in the day to day life during your um, uh, different type of uh, exercise or different type of you know, work and uh, now come back uh, to this uh, uh, that you know uh, dark fermentation process when it, it follows two type of pathway one is called uh, acetic acid pathway and another is butyric acid pathway now if it acetic acid pathway if it follow it produce four moles of hydrogen now if it follows the butyric acid pathway it follows the two moles of hydrogen but if it it is if it produce only ethanol ethanol and it doesn't produce any kind of any kind of hydrogen and not only that it it consumes a lot of nadh because you know that you see the four nadh is converted is utilized and produce a four nad plus so this nadh is a very good raw materials for the hydrogen generation you can see it here that hydrogen nadh2 the nadh and this a proton which is coming out in presence of electron products in reductant and produces an oxidant they will give the electron here and it produces the hydrogen so you know that this kind of currency for the so this uh, and same thing happens in case of lactate for pathway the pathway that is the in two nadh molecule is used for lactic acid formation and here so so our our temptation is that is it possible to uh, block this pathway is is it possible to block this pathway and uh, so that we can save lot of nadh and that leads to a lot of hydrogen production so this we have successfully carried out in our lab and we increase the hydrogen production from the, uh, from, from the from the raw materials so it is uh, considered as a efficient hydrogen production process compared to other biological process it lead to formation of other uh, bio products the uh, bio fuels like Uh, ethanol acetic acid and butyric acid does not require light and the scaling up is completely easier and cost effective and different waste of high organic load can be used as a substitute this is the advantage of that now we have we have uh, two type of bacteria we can use for hydrogen production one is called mesophile 
and then for thermal file. We know meso file is usually off, uh, but the temperature is almost close to our ambient temperature because we are in the tropical country. Our ambient temperature is almost at 30, 35 degrees centigrade. So this is good enough for the for these uh, meso files, but thermal files require very high temperature about 60 degrees centigrade. Now. One advantage of uh, this uh, uh, thermophiles as compared to mesophiles that when you use thermophiles at the high temperature, obviously that you know uh, when you use any kind of waste material, it may be comprises of different type of contaminants. So at uh, at 60 degrees centigrade, most of the pathogens they will be uh, killed. And since the operation is take, be taking place under anaerobic condition, uh, a very limited number of bacteria can grow. In that way, this process can be easily operated on the unsterile conditions. But here, here we have observed that you know, in a, in a, when we studied the 10,000 liter pilot pan, then we observed that uh, when we do to go to the final stage of operation, then we, we, uh, we operated on sterile conditions just to maintain the anaerobic conditions. And that is good enough for the operation of the system. Now, now if you look at uh, here, the mesophiles again of two types. One is called obligate, another is uh, facultative. Now, obligate anaerobes is uh, very difficult to handle. You know the dissolved oxygen concentration in the medium is about 10 to the power minus 56 moles per uh, moles per liter, which is very difficult to achieve. And facultative is they can tolerate little uh, that uh, oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen present in the fermentation pool. This is very easily uh, we can use. And thermophile are mostly their obligate anaerobes. <clears throat> now, this is the metabolic pathway uh, in, 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 in case of uh, this uh, formate hydrogen lines because we, we, when we started the research work, we tried to try to identify which, which organism can uh, give the highest hydrogen production. And I'm glad to report here that we were able to identify one bacteria, Interactor clocking. We, hydro, we are isolated from the leaf of a particular flower plant, and that uh, that uh, will give the highest hydrogen production. So, for being reported in the literature. So, initially, uh, interbacter flocky was not uh, known for hydrogen generation. So, initially, we have strong opposition from scientific community just to justify how this uh, this uh, organism leads to hydrogen generation. And we find the formate hydrogen lyase is the major key engine of this process that is responsible for hydrogen production. More, mostly in the, uh, in the hydrogen production process, uh, the enzyme that is involved, that is the hydrogen ion hydrogen. But here, it is mostly the formate hydrogen ion that is that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that convert formate to hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And this is the hydrogenous enzyme I was talking about this, uh, this uh, this is present in case of obligate analog, and this is uh, uh, this has the, um, the, the this cannot tolerate the molecular oxygen. So and so this is this is the major bottleneck of this process. So this is the roadmap because we started our research work in uh, 1999, and the first paper we published in 2000 that uh, published in Process Biochemistry. And then uh, we I published one paper that is in 2001. And uh, the, I'm glad to report here that citation number of this paper is 2,254 as, as, as of today. And then uh, we, 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 we use the different uh, uh, techniques for hydrogen generation that, uh, that is simulation and modeling for continuous hydrogen production. We, we have we observed that batch process is no good for the industrial in the industrialization of the process. So initially we still have to go for continuous process and we find that continuous process is very suitable for the hydrogen production. Then we did some kind of molecular biology study just to find out what kind of enzymes present in the system. We find some noble iron hydrogen is also present in the in, the, in, the, in this particular organism. Multiple parameter optimization also taking taking place. Now, one interesting observation we observed that is the decrease in partial pressure that increased the hydrogen production to a great extent. Because I shall show you that uh, 
that you know if you look at the equilibrium constant equilibrium constant equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of substrate and since our product is hydrogen and if we apply vacuum then what will happen that you are taking out hydrogen from the from the from the media so initially the hydrogen ion concentration will decrease that increase the hydrogen production to a great extent so this is this is the benefit of this then we use the different the, the bacteria we isolated from different location as for example anaerobic sewer sludge then also we we isolated the uh, bacteria from uh, from high oil containing soil and uh, like a citrobacter friendly and we find that suitable for hydrogen production now we have we have worked with the different photobiological process and uh, and we established the fact that it's no good for hydrogen generation then uh, we, we 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 change the operating conditions the regulated pH pH how it affect the hydrogen production then mixed culture how it uh, affect the this the hydrogen production process now one interesting things i want to share with you that you know that anaerobic digestion process is largely operated throughout the world and um, i don't know it usually governed by the two group of microflora one is called acidogens and another is called methanogens and acidogens a few researcher they explored the acidogens for hydrogen production since we we developed the expertise on hydrogen production process my students work with this acidogens and find out they are as good as good as our pure organism so the the beauty of this process is that when you use acidogens you don't have to use any kind of unsterile conditions just uh, it can produce waste you can just you put the organism and it can produce the hydrogen so now come back uh, let us share some of our research experiences i told you that we have uh, we find three bacteria which is very suitable very much suitable for hydrogen production one is enterobacter clocky and citrobacter friendly which is isolated from high oil containing soil the bacillus coagulum from swiss lodge and this is the lab fermenter which is used this is the control module this is the gas collector that we have that is water displacement measure method we use for hydrogen production and and this is the profile that we have you can see the we have the different profiles that uh, this is the hydrogen production profile by using glucose and uh, sucrose the glucose the rate of production initially is very fast and sucrose after some time the rate of production increases <clears throat> we try to find out the different carbon sources how it is good for hydrogen production this is uh, if, if you find out that uh, your cellulose and uh, your, your 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 sucrose that uh, leads the hydrogen and sucrose that give the uh, much higher hydrogen production and since you know, all these carbon sources can be used for hydrogen generation so from that we can conclude that mixed uh, when you use any kind of waste material organic waste we can make we cannot expect a pure substrate there it might be a combination of different carbohydrate and that is why we find that since it has the capability of using different type of carbon source so it can has the capability of different type of using different type of waste material so this is the uh, this is kind of performance of this reactor that we uh, that uh, continuous system we produce 3.8 moles of hydrogen and 5 moles of uh, glucose now this is uh, and i have already shown you if you follow the acidic acid uh, pathway then acidic acid production pathway you can maximum we can produce 4 moles so maximum we achieve that is 3.8 moles so almost close to the theoretical limit now i was talking about concept here that you know whether it is possible to use the different type of microbial microbial cell together and find out uh, whether it is suitable for hydrogen production because the the purpose of using the big microbial mix microbial consortia to maintain the uh, unsterile conditioning process we identified this microflora from the anaerobic digester i so told you the acidogens that has the capability to produce uh, hydrogen so this is the kind of mixed consortia we isolated one is mesophile mixed consortia and the thermophilic mixed consortia and this is the performance of this uh, of this uh, particular 
organism is given here. Our organism is interacted properly, I to be to zero it. And this is the pure culture, this is the mixed culture. We find we find the mixed culture has better results as compared to the uh, compared to the pure culture. You can see that is pathogen in mixed culture is about 170 millimoles per liter. And this is kind of um, um, the metagenomic study we try to carry out that you know uh, metagenomic study as you as you know this is used for uh, for uh, for identifying the uh, organism which is uh, non-culturable and by using that we try to find out how 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 it is how the hydrogen production can be improved and uh, in this uh, process we try to use the uh, the three organisms that enter enterobacter clocky, citrobacter friendly, and um, the bacillus coagulant in different ratio. One is to one is to one, two is to one is to one, one is to two is to one, one is to one is to two, and try to find out what is the uh, hydrogen yield and hydrogen rate of hydrogen production. We find that uh, this ratio, one is to one is to one, that gives the better hydrogen production as compared to other combinations of that. And the important conclusion we draw from that, when you change the uh, waste material, suppose you use the Swiss sludge as the raw material for hydrogen production, then when we use the microbial consortial analysis, then we find that bacillus coagulant will be there growing more because since the organisms were isolated from uh, Swiss sludge. So similarly, that you know, when you use any kind of high oil containing uh, waste material, then we find the citrobacter friendly, they grow much better as compared to other organisms. This is kind of substance, substance specificities that we observe. Now, another thing, hydrogen production by dark fermentation, by different type of, of waste material that causes the health hazard. The equalization waste to energy gives the double benefit by the mediation and bioenergy uh, production. High organic contents are the carbon source in dark fermentation. Some waste like algal biomass, dual cake can serve as nutrient supplement. And anaerobic sludge is rich in dark fermentative organism can be used for this particular hydrogen generation process. I made a very simple comparative study that if you use the pure glucose as a substrate and waste as a substrate, how gaseous energy you can you can calculate the simple calculation is there i can leave this uh, ppt with you you can uh, you can take from the organizer you can see how how we have calculated this can be easily done and uh, this is the kind of analysis we have we have done by using glucose and distillery effluent and this is the kind of competitive study we have we find the distillery effluent is quite good. You can see the acidogenic mix uh, consortia is 156 millimoles hydrogen per liter. That is much better than glucose that we have. So, so, so one way we are doing the biodemediation, another way we are producing the hydrogen. So now uh, let me tell you, I was talking about the, the batch sip process is no good for the hydrogen generation. So we would try to operate the continuous system. Now in the continuous system, what we have done, we use the immobilized solid matrix in this reactor, and we pass the waste material. This is the fish tank. With the help of peristaltic pump, we can pass through this reactor. And since the organism is fixed on the solid surface, when it passes through this, it reacts with the organisms and produces hydrogen. The hydrogen we can collect it in by water displacement method. And here is the vacuum recycle system. I told you that. That uh, that you know that uh, partial pressure of hydrogen plays a very important role for this hydrogen production. So we can we we develop kind of vacuum recycle system. This is 370 to uh, six, uh, six, uh, six uh, fifty. That uh, within this range we try to operate this, and we find that one atmospheric and half atmospheric pressure that range is good enough to. Really, give the highest amount of hydrogen production and this finally we collected in the gas collector so this is the this is actually actually the setup this is the custom made 20 liter reactor and this is different tanks we have at the end of my presentation i shall show you a small video 
there I we can show you the operation of this system. This is the vacuum recycle system that we developed by ourselves, and this is the gas collector. This is the vacuum recycle. This is the automatic logic control system we developed by ourselves, and this is this is how the cell. This is the solid matrix. And this is, you can see how the cells are immobilized on the surface of the solid metric. This is more clear picture we have by the ACM studies, the scanning electron microscope. This is the fiber. We use the coconut coir as a solid metric. And when the organism grow on the surface, you can see how they grow on the surface and how it is oozes out from the surface. That also you can see that how, how they're coming out from the, from the solid surface. This is kind of <clears throat> material analysis of this 20 liter system for one kg of uh, this uh, COD. We can, we can produce 80.8 uh, plus minus 1.2 gram of COD in the form of hydrogen. Then major metabolites is produced, the acetic acid, butyric acid and ethanol and biomass and effluent that is there. And this is kind of a uh, comparative stable I request all of you uh, well, please go through that, uh, that uh, you will find kind of, this is all our study that uh, we try to report and we try to make a comparison and find out how good it is there. And, and now I, I want to uh, tell you something about our uh, uh, hydrogen pilot fan, 10,000 liter facility as a IIT Kharagpur. Now, one thing I want to tell you that uh, this is done uh, under the sponsor project of MNRI. MNRI means Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Source. The Ministry of New and, and Energy Renewable Energy Source, they invited me to uh, lead one project. This is biohydrogen project in India. I took uh, five other groups, one group from ICP Hyderabad, one, one group from JNT Hyderabad, then Hyderabad University, then, uh, then uh, Banners in the university and Teddy. So we, 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 we try to work together and try to develop this technology. And final aim was to go for 10,000 liter reactor and try to find out how it is suitable for, uh, for the hydrogen generation. Then I am, I'm glad to report here that, uh, that, you know, that we have successfully operated. I think I'm the, at the end of my presentation, there is a provision for the, uh, for the 16 minutes video regarding the operation of the pilot plan. This is the uh, pilot plan that we have. This is 10,000 liter reactor. This is three cubic meter and two cubic meter. This is the feed tank. And this is the uh, seed tank. This is 500 liter. This is 50 liter. So we, we, we first uh, developed the culture in the, in the lab in a small reactor, maybe in five liters. And from five liters, we develop, we, we inoculate this in the 50 liters, 50 liters, we inoculate in the 500 liters. This 500 liters, we inoculate, uh, we, we make it uh, four people, four, 450, uh, uh, 4,500 liters. And there we 500 liters of, of uh, inoculum we added when the rate of hydrogen production is maximum, then make up to 10,000 10, liters. This is how we operate. And this is our website, www.bio.hti.it. So the, that 10 or 16 minute video is available in the website also. In your laser time, you can have a look. You will enjoy that, how we operated that. And, and this is kind of material balance of this process that from 100 kg of the feedstock, we can produce about 2 kg of hydrogen and a lot of uh, the, that uh, soluble metabolites we can produce. And I, 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 I want to share with you that this uh, acetate and butyrate can be easily used uh, in, the, uh, in the methanogenic reactor or anaerobic digestion reactor to convert it to methane and carbon dioxide. So this is called biohydrogen system, with the hydrogen followed by methane. That also we developed by ourselves. We have a book on that. We find that this is the process that will be with us in the years to come. And this is the other material analysis with respect to COD. And this is kind of energy analysis we have done. We find the, the total energy recovery with respect to substrate removed with 37.9%. And this is the kind of scale of operation we, 
we have done. This is uh, we started with the serum bottle, then point five liter. This um, uh, this uh, your 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 fabricated reactants we use. This is all custom made. Then this is the control fermenter. This is the New Brunswick fermenter. Then again, this is our custom made reactor, 20 liter reactor. Then this, this then we have 50 liter reactor. Then 500. Then we operate. We have gone for the 10,000 liter reactor. This is how we operated. The uh, the Tata uh, hydrogen fuel cell bus is operated now in operation. Not only. Tata, a lot of automobile industry, uh, Mahinder and Mahinder, they are running the three-wheeler very successfully. And now they are going for four-wheeler also. So this is largely used. And, and international company like Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, Honda, they, they are using hydrogen for the for operating the vehicles. And I, I would like to report to you that I published, uh, we, we published three books. One is this, uh, Fundamentals, of biofuel production process, I wrote with my student, Jhasi L. Banarasi. This published in 2019, last year it is published. And this is the hydrogen uh, production and fundamentals and technology. This is the textbook. And this is published by CRC Press. This also published by CRC Press. And um, so if, you, if anybody want to know details of hydrogen production process, this is the ideal book. And biohyphen. This is the hydrogen followed by methane. And this is the first book in the world that we published. And this published by the, uh, the, the uh, Jenny Stanford Publishers. And other book we published like Biochemical uh, Engineering uh, Introductory Textbook. This is really good uh, for all the students who are, who, are, um, who are doing the biotechnology or chemical engineering or biochemical engineering. Even Biochemistry students they also understand that. Then we also publish that, uh, this will be published in the winter. This is bio biochemical engineering laboratory manual. I observe there is no such a laboratory manual is available in the world. So we try to write this uh, book. I hope it will be very much useful for the students. We have uh, published uh, two uh, two different books. This is the edited book. Uh, one is uh, Angle Biodifferently and Integrated Approach. I hope uh, if you go through that, you can find out that how the algal can be used for different purposes. It is a very useful book. And microbial fuel cell, I told you that how you, the waste material, I hope the, uh, the, the several authors, the several speakers like Professor Ghandekar, Dr. Venkat Mohan, they might have already talked about the microbial fuel cell. That is a very unique technique through which the waste can be converted into the, <coughs> the electricity. And <coughs> this is the, I, I, in the introduction, uh, I mentioned that I am the fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineers. This I received in the year 2015. Then I received the fellow of International Association of Hydrogen Energy 2016, the unique uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, achievement I have, and then I uh, I, I got the Akira Misui Award. This is in the year 2008. This is the for my research work on the on the pioneer research and promoting development of biohydrogen production by application of fermentation technology. This has been given in 2008, and then we, we I also received the Malubia Memorial Award in 2013 as a senior professor. And then recently in 2019, the Biochemical, the Bio, uh, Biological Engineering Society, they gave the felicitation and IIT address that uh, that's also I got. And uh, for the students, I want to share this thing that I am offering this course that industrial biotechnology. This course I am offering last four years. The three, uh, three last three years we had, had already offered and more than 3,000 students every year they participated. And this year also we have more than uh, one in uh, 1,000, more than 1,000 uh, students already enrolled. And I hope this book will, this uh, course will be very much useful. This is the 12 week course, this is the intensive work, intensive uh, this uh, course work. And uh, this uh, the certificate will be given by the IIT Madras and ISC Bangalore. And this is equivalent to three credit course. I hope um, uh, 
you can if anybody industry interested to the interested for this industrial by uh, fermentation process they can have a very deep knowledge if you go through this particular process thank you very much thank you very much sir such an erudite session and hopefully many young scientists no i say i want to yes sir please Yeah, hello. Uh, hello. I want to share uh, yes, one video, so a short video. Sure, sir. Please. Yeah, I can.
thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, as now we have the interactive session uh, so here we receive the number of questions from the our participants as i already said that we have a very keen and very enthusiastic participants and we are constantly receiving many questions from them uh, but due to time constraint i cannot take all the questions so if you allow me sir so can i start with some questions yes, from yes, the yes, participants yes, yes. Okay, sir. So the first question is uh, from Dr. Prasanta Dev. He want to ask that uh, can we use both the bacteria and algae together for the generation of hydrogen? Both the bacteria. Which? Both bacteria and algae together. Uh, let me let me tell you the, the, that you know that I told you that uh, we have studied the algae separately and try to find out the potentiality of algae for hydrogen generation, and we have concluded. the algae as such is not good for hydrogen production but the algae can be used as a nutrient supplement suppose we no use any kind of waste material for the hydrogen generation process you know we no use any kind of bacteria you might be knowing that you require carbon source you require nitrogen source you require minerals you require vitamins because like human by human system for our survival also we require all this important material now when you use any kind of waste material it has lack of some kind of essential nutrient like vitamins and other things so if we add some kind of waste material we add kind then comes some some nutrient supplement then our bacterial growth will be more so algae can be used as a nutrient supplement for different type of waste material and if we use uh, with the different type of waste material then the waste material can be can be converted to hydrogen very fast okay the second question uh, came from dr vishwas he want to ask is hydrogen production through biological routes eco friendly uh, eco friendly in the sense that you know that uh, obviously i think the question what uh, dr vishwas ask uh, that in targeting that in a biological system during the respiration of the cells always it produce some kind of carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide we can we can remove we can we can remove uh, by use there are different type of uh, that uh, carbon dioxide uh, that you know purification devices already available in the industry actually i had the opportunity for working with a american scientist that you know he after 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 his retirement he came to india and he gave me the all the data just to design his uh, 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 pilot plan and then after that we did the design after the design he insisted us to run this process as iit kharagpur so that is that was something different this is um, kind of electrochemical system and we have done that and uh, during that process also it produces a lot of carbon dioxide but carbon dioxide is successfully separated by using different solvent and and uh, recycle back also like uh, monoethyl methane diethyl methane that can, that can be used and you know that this hydrogen also you have high pressure you can produce the dry ice and it can be sell it to the industry and but you know hydrogen if you take as such the the the, the importance of this hydrogen is that is this hydrogen doesn't have sulfur dioxide it doesn't have h12 it doesn't have carbon monoxide so hydrogen if we pass directly to the fuel cell we can directly convert it to the electricity so because that is the major advantage of this hydrogen gas okay sir uh, the next question is from ravi uh, is there any chance of losing hydrogen production potential of bacteria over time have you done any study for this can you repeat the question again yes sir is there any chance of losing 
hydrogen production potential of bacteria over time losing hydrogen means i could not understand what do you mean by losing i don't know sir this the question came from the audiences uh, uh, no. I think the question is, uh, I think uh, what it means, will the potency of the bacteria or the efficiency of the bacteria reduce over time? Reduces over oh, the time. I see, I see, I see. The production okay, of hydrogen okay. production. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Now let me, let me answer to this question. Because, you know, that uh, we, uh, in our lab, we, I told you that uh, initially we identified one bacteria called Enterobacter clothi. I find very good for the hydrogen generation and time required... 11 to 12 hours for you know total fermentation in the batch process. Now when we go for the acidogens, our also that is also time required is almost like this. And now question comes that you know when we use any kind of bacteria or any kind of organism during the inoculation, we should have to be careful that that should be in the lock phase. And what we what we usually have. The organ, the inoculum should be in between mid lock phase to the lo late lock phase, just to ensure the organism in the lock phase. Now, if your organism in the lock phase, your production is uninterrupted. But if you allow the organism go to the stationary phase, obviously your production will go down. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request Dr. Swamy Pandit to pay his thanks to you, Dr. Swamy Pandit, sir. Before that, I would like to say a few words. Uh, in fact, I am really delighted that Professor Devrath Das could spare his valuable time to talk to our uh, large number of participants today. Professor Das, in fact, is a very well-known name in the field of bioenergy production and biohydrogen production all over the world. I will not say only in India, but all over the world. He's a very big name in that field, and I'm really grateful to him that he could uh, uh, share some of his knowledge and about his about the technology. And this, uh, in fact, this is a way of uh, the bio waste or the waste that we are generating all over the planet can be utilized purposefully to generate energy from this, and not only energy but many other byproducts that can be obtained from this process. And I'm sure uh, this is the way the world should go forward and uh, prevent this uh, planet from getting just inundated by so much of bio waste and so much other, other kinds of waste. Microorganisms are very powerful, very specific kinds of bacteria, efficiency of bacteria. And the, the wonderful thing is that if you go through the process of biotechnology, Bacteria are amenable to modification and to improvements also. We can work on their genetic potential also to improve their efficiency. Uh, we can generate new strains of bacteria. And for this, there are no bans from the government of India or any other bodies on transforming bacteria actually. So this is where, so there, are, there are bans on transforming plants and animals, but there, as far as I know, there is no ban on transforming bacteria that too useful bacteria and and this kind of thing can be done of course a lot of biological studies are uh, to be carried out also simultaneously as we know that uh, bacteria over time over generations as the question was raised they can lose their potency and particularly in the culture the medium they instead of natural medium if you multiply them on artificial medium for a long time uh, over generations the potency is lost that happens with many other parasites and parasitoids also. Uh, but this uh, process is a lot of biological work required here. So it's a kind of good marriage of the engineering, bioengineering, and biotechnology and microbiology, uh, which can really solve much of the problem of the world and can be very useful. I'm really grateful, Professor Das, for his wonderful uh, work over, over the period, over his life, and the kind of uh, achievement that he's made. And I'm really delighted to see the passion. I've heard about you for many years, but I saw you for the first time today, and that too talking. The kind of passion that you have, this is what a scientist requires. If a scientist is passionate about his work, about the outcome, about the outcome of the work, and the and the and the working culture, this uh, this is the key to success. Actually, and I'm really delighted. I really congratulate you, Dr. Das, 
for uh, having done this wonderful work and also your contributions to academics to development of knowledge progression of knowledge and also your uh, swam courses that will be really useful your manuals practical manuals will be very useful i in fact recommend to my faculty to obtain copies of these and to download and also to include this course as one of the courses in our uh, cbcs uh, course curriculum of microbiology and biotechnology in fact in agri science also i will try to include this course uh, we have an agricultural science department also so so the sarda university is a multi disciplinary university from medicine to agriculture we have all kind of departments here yes. all kind of schools except veterinary sciences we have everything else here and there is a lot of scope here to collaborate yeah. and i look forward to for your guidance in fact to my faculty yes. and so to guide them to develop in this direction Mm. Professor Blasha and many others are doing wonderful work here also, but they need uh, patronage. They need some guidance, and I'm sure uh, people like you can really guide them. Some me and others, they can be guided, and uh, we shall be del del delighted to have you sometime physically also in the university uh, more often. And uh, we look forward to working together with you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks indeed. It's my pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, God sir. because without your guidance and support nothing is feasible sir thank you for your guidance now dr somi sir please so on behalf of our uh, w2b uh, team myself dr somu pandit convener we are happy to express the vote of thanks to you for your esteemed talk on biohydrogen production for the efdp come workshop on waste to bioenergy so i am really proud that uh, i am a student of prof das and i know sir uh, is one of the very few in india who started from lab work to the entirely uh, to the scale up and finally he has transferred the technology to for commercialization to that uh, dhampur sugar mill in uh, uttar pradesh so it was indeed a kind of uh, evidence like how one uh, professor should approach like in most of the cases we have seen that professors they just confine their work only in lab scale and but professor das su successfully uh, come up with uh, application and uh, he showed the way so i i am really delighted and i am really thankful to sir and hopefully he will continue his research work and help us and uh, and we need his blessings so thank you sir thank you very much thank you All Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Das. I will be in touch with you, and I will get uh, more help from you, Andre. Okay. I am the dean. I am the dean of the School of Basic Science and Research, okay. and also Agricultural Sciences here. Okay. And I am former vice chancellor of the Agricultural University Meerut, and former dean of uh, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, where some of this work is also going on, and that's where I heard about you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you sir now we are ready for our second speaker our second speaker of this session is dr sanjeet mehrariya he is a senior researcher at department of engineering university of campania italy he completed european phd from velumac project at university of campania italy prior to phd he has 6 years research experience in different research projects at csir igib delhi konkuk university south korea enea italy and hkbu hong kong his main research focuses on sustainable development microalgae biorefinery microalgae cultivation co2 sequestration environmental impact assessment and carbon footprint studies He has published more than thirty papers in high impact factor journals with total impact factor of ninety, and has publications have high number of citations with total citation of seven not nine. So I welcome Dr. Sanjeev, sir. Please over to you. Sir, can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Are you audible? Yes. Can you hear me? 
Hello. Yes, sir. We okay. can hear you. So, firstly, I would like to thanks to yes. Okay. So, I continuing my presentation. So, firstly, I would like to thanks to the organizers, Sada University and MIT, for organizing this wonderful event and also giving the opportunity to present our work in this uh, wonderful workshop and presentation. So, I think you can see my screen now. Yes, sir. Okay. So I am going to present my research work, which I have carried carrying out in the Italy with the University of Ben Vitelli. So I am working on the production of high value compounds from microalgae, cultivation of microalgae for extraction of bioactive compounds. So firstly, I I go on the like why we are using the microalgae because microalgae having several applications and it has several bioactive compounds that can be utilized in the nutraceutical pharmaceutical and also in different applications and it can be cultivated in the with the several environmental advantages such as it can be utilized the co2 from the atmosphere and also with the help of sunlight and use the water with the minimal nutrients while also in the cultivation phase it has several applications such as wastewater treatment, removal of heavy metals, and also can be utilized the seawater for cultivation. And the after the cultivation phase, the biomass can be recovered and have several applications in the nutraceutical sector for biofuel and also for animal feed, pigments, biofertilizer, and so on. So basically, we are focusing on nutraceuticals and pharmaceutical compounds because the microalgal biofuel is not feasible economically feasible because the cultivation of microalgae is very costly while the while the and the biodiesel cost will be very low as compared to the cultivation cost so that's why this is not feasible for the biofuel production while for the nutraceutical compounds that have a high market demand and high cost so it can be helpful to cultivate the microalgae for production of these compounds so actually we are working this framework of the value mug project is a European project. So we are developing the membrane photobioreactor for fast cultivation of microalgae. And in the same time, we use the CO2 sequestration unit. We capture the CO2 from this atmosphere because in atmosphere CO2 level is increasing day by day. And we are, we, as a researcher, we have to find the alternate way to, to develop the sustainable way to for the meet the growing demand of the society. So we use the CO2 from atmosphere and cultivate the microalgae in the presence of light. So the biomass have the application in food unit, nutraceutical, as well as in the cosmetic units. And also we analyze the market demand of these compounds in different sectors. And also with the, during the growth phase, we recycle the water or like the filtrate or the residual water after the growth phase of first phase of the microalgae. So we also trying to minimize the requirement of water for microalgae cultivation. So firstly, we are working in the different four scope that is the cultivation of microalgae that we use different microalgae strains for production of bio bioactive compounds for their applications. And then we use the CO2 sequestration unit for recovery of CO2 from atmosphere. Then in the second phase scope, we use the water recycling approach and after finally, we analyze the market demand of these compounds. So firstly, we are working in the laboratory condition using as shown in this figure that we are working with the photobioreactor and providing the artificial light, also the CO2, artificial CO2 with the gas mixture to, to establish the protocol for large scale production. So here is the photobioreactor that which are fabricated on lab laboratory. And here we can see that the photobioreactor are, uh, contains the chiller for maintaining the temperature. Also this photobioreactor, uh, this is the lid for uh, with the providing this light intensity with the different intensity. And also the, we can control the colors of the light. So here is the front view of the photobioreactor. This is the uh, screen that we can monitor remotely this uh, photobioreactor. And also we having the photobioreactor with the two different working capacity. That is uh, one is a uh, uh, volume to surface ratio of 11.5 liter meter square with the working volume of 1.2 liter. While another photobioreactor having the volume to surface ratio of 56.5 liter meter square. 
and with the working volume of 28.8 liter so the volume to surface ratio is very important for the any process for large scale or pilot scale production because in the larger scale and in the laboratory scale they have the very different metabolism of the bacterial cells and so that's why we are doing the experiments with the two two phase in the laboratory and then we are scaling up at the pilot plant in the 500 liter in the uh, our with the partner of the project so here is the key objective of our project was the screening and selection of different microbial strains for production of high value added compounds then the selection of sandesmus elmerensis for lutein production selection of hematococcus for astaxanthin production and optimization of different operational parameter for growth of microalgae and production of high value added compounds then nutrient and water recycling after the growth phase small scale versus large scale cultivation system to compare the biomass productivity and also productivity of the uh, bioactive compounds and then the, we also check the stress effect of stress condition on the estaxanthin production from hematococcus pulvillis so during the screening phase like why we choose these two microalgae strains because these microalgae strains having the potential for production of bioactive compounds that is the uh, lutein and estaxanthin and these both compound having the high uh, activity for antioxidant activity like also skin cancer and also anti inflammatory activity while the demand of these both compounds increasing year by year and we found that for estaxanthin in 2010 the demand was around uh, 220 million euro in 2009 while in 2020 it expected to rise up to 730 million euro while for the lutein also the, the demand is increasing year by year and with the compound annual growth rate of 6.1 and is also in with the estaxanthin the cgra is little bit high as compared to the lutein because estaxanthin is have several applications in nutraceutical and in pharmaceuticals also the estaxanthin and also lutein based nutraceutical compounds or the nutraceuticals are available also in the market so here i would like to show you the like the experimental condition for the hematococcus sorry for the sandesmus elmerensis and the effect of co2 concentration and water recycling for the growth of microalgae so firstly we work with a small scale photobioreactor to optimize the condition and we with the working volume of 1.2 liter and the temperature was controlled at 28 degree while the ph was auto controlled during the growth phase in the range of 7.5 to 8.5 while the flow rate was maintained and the light intensity and light color was also maintained so firstly we use the different four concentration of the co2 that was 0 0.5 1.5 and 3 and this is the first phase of growth and in this growth phase we harvest the biomass using the membrane technology and after the harvesting of biomass we use the filtrate for the secondary growth with the addition of the inoculum and we access or we analyze that effect of the water recycling approach on the biomass and a bioactive compound productivity so this was the gas mixture which we have used for our uh, laboratory scale system so while the second experiment was comparison of the small scale versus large scale cultivation system for the biomass productivity so here we analyze or like firstly we grow the in the small scale cultivation system then we compare the results with the large scale cultivation system because we have to demonstrate these results at pilot scale for a commercialization of this process so in this we also use with the optimized fixed parameters that we used in earlier experiment so here then we access the effect of light intensity on estaxanthin production from the Uh, hematococcus pulvillis so firstly i would like to give you the brief about the hematococcus pulvillis hematococcus pulvillis is a microalgae that work or grow in the two phase that is a first phase a green phase and then second is the red phase so red phase occurs in the stress conditions like the stress of salinity light stress temperature stress 
and also metabolic stress so we optimize the growth condition for green phase then we induce the stress conditions using the light intensity and the light was used blue light with the different looks on the surface of photobioreactor that was 2500 looks on the photobioreactor and also 500 looks that is less stress as compared to this one so we access this effect in the small scale photobioreactor while the green phase was cultivated in the large scale photobioreactor with the volume to surface ratio of 26 liter meter square with the working volume of 28.8 liter so in the growth phase we monitor the parameters and we control the growth that how the microalgae working and also we monitor the parameters like temperature ph and also the aeration rate with the system automated system then we collect the biomass from the photobioreactor and we analyze the growth using the spectrophotometer and we analyze the chlorophyll a content a and chlorophyll b content at four different nanometers and after the stress for the growth we harvest the biomass using the membrane technology and we use the pvd membrane for a harvesting of biomass while after the harvesting we use the filtrate as we can see here that this is the filtrate is and this in the center is the medium so filtrate is very clear as the medium so the filtrate was used for the secondary growth and in the filtrate we analyze the nutrient availability using the ionic chromatogram to access the which compounds or which nutrients are available in the and uh, how much the conjugation efficiency during the growth phase while the wet biomass was life life and uh, had a further processing for the extraction of bioactive compounds so in the extraction phase firstly the lyophilized biomass was uh, pre treated at different uh, optimized conditions that we optimize for each microalgae because each biomass of each microalgae having different uh, properties physiochemical properties that like uh, thickness of cell wall and all then we extract the compounds using the acylated solvent extraction and with the optimized conditions that we optimized with the earlier in our other experiments and we found that this green biomass after the extraction was turned into very light yellow color or transparent and we see that the first extract was very dark because in the first extract the compound or the bioactive compound concentration was very higher as compared to second extract then the extract was quantified using the ultra hplc and gas chromatography with the fid detector for analysis of fatty acid and for ultra hplc for analysis of carotenoids while the quantification of the extract was carried out using the turbo wave after the evaporation of solvent and the gravimetric analysis was carried out for the quantification of the uh, extract so here i would like to discuss about the results that in the uh, firstly we analyze the effect of water recycling approach on the biomass productivity and we found that the biomass productivity slightly decrease the biomass uh, productivity and also while the increasing co2 concentration increase the biomass productivity and with the fresh growth medium the biomass productivity was around 3.8 gram per liter of the cultivation and it was achieved around in the 10 days while with the nutrient this re nutrient and water recycling approach the biomass productivity was around 2.1 gram per liter of the biomass and it was obtained with the 3% of the co2 so here we found that the nutrient uh, or water recycling approach did not help in the biomass productivity because in the nutrient recycling approach the nutrients was very low as compared to uh, the fresh medium also we calculated the net biomass productivity and we found that net biomass productivity was slightly uh, slightly increased with the increasing concentration of co2 with the nutrient recycling approach while with the fresh growth medium as you in the orange color it was a that uh, the net biomass productivity was higher with the 1.5% of the co2 concentration while it was slightly lower in the 3% so in the then we access the nutrient conjugation efficiency using the ionic chromatogram and we found that with the fresh growth medium the nutrient conjugation conjugation efficiency was higher than 50% for most of the nutrients 
while with the nutrient uh, recycling approach the nutrient consumption efficiency was low below than 50% for most of nutrients because the the, the the filtrate contains several toxic compound and also the nutrient availability also was in a bit like the the toxicity was in could be impossible in the filtrate so that's why the consumption efficiency was low so here after we extract the bioactive compounds using the acylated solvent extraction unit and we firstly we found that with the fresh medium and growth uh, recycling medium the fresh medium was better for the extraction yield of the compound and uh, found that maximum extraction yield was obtained with the fresh medium with the 3% of co2 and with, it was around 310 mg per gram of dry biomass so we found that increasing co2 concentration improved the extraction yield and also the analysis of ultra hplc reflected us that the the fresh medium having the higher lutein productivity and also increasing co2 concentration have the positive effect on the lutein content and the lutein is a higher productivity was obtained with the 3% of the co2 and it was around 5.8 mg per gram of dry biomass. So then in the second phase, we optimized or we compared the results of small scale versus large scale cultivation system. And we found that in the large scale cultivation system, the biomass productivity was below or like one gram, below than one gram per liter of the biomass, while in the small scale, it was around 3.8. So the large scale cultivation system have low, lower biomass productivity as compared to a small scale cultivation system. While in the both cultivation system, we found that increasing CO2 concentration have positive effect on biomass productivity. And also the net biomass productivity NLI give us the estimation that the net biomass productivity was very high with the small scale cultivation system as compared to large scale cultivation system. So also we access the nutrient consumption efficiency and we found that in the large scale cultivation system, the nutrient consumption efficiency was very low as compared to this small scale cultivation system. While here we analyze the extraction and also lutein content, here we found interestingly that the, the result was contrary as compared to the biomass productivity with the large scale cultivation system. And here we found that with the increasing concentration of CO2, the extraction yield as well as lutein content increased with the increase in concentration of CO2. While with the increasing working volume of photobioreactor, that is 1.2 liter with the volume to surface ratio of 11.5 liter meter square and also with the 28.8 liter with the volume to surface ratio of 56.5 liter meter square, we found that the extraction yield was higher with the large scale cultivation system as well as lutein content was higher with the large scale cultivation system. And we found that the, in the large scale cultivation system that there is a stress conditions that due to the cheer force of the photobioreactor that with the higher working volume, it caused a stress condition on microalgal cells. And during the stress, the microalgal cells also accumulate higher content of lutein and as well as also other bioactive compounds that can be reflected from the extraction yield and these our results were supported also uh, reported in the literature that uh, stress condition enhanced the productivity of these bio compounds from the microalgae strains so here i would like to show you the results of hematococcus pulvillus for the estagenthin production and here in the first figure we see that the higher stress condition that is the light intensity stress and we found that the, with the light intensity of 2,500 looks on the surface of a photobioreactor, the chlorophyll content was gradually decreased, drastically decreased, while the content of the absorption in the red spectrum increased. So the higher stress condition induced the uh, absorbance in the red spectrum, while with the less stress condition, we found that uh, absor chlorophyll absorbance decrease very slightly as compared to higher stress conditions while the 
absorbance in the red spectrum was very low as compared to the higher stress conditions so here also we access the nutrient conjunction efficiency and found that with the higher uh, stress condition nutrient conjunction efficiency was higher than 60% for most of the nutrients while the highest nutrient conjunction efficiency was for uh, nitrate with the uh, high stress condition with the light intensity of 2500 lux on the photobaric surface of photobioreactor while with the less stress conditions the nutrient conjunction efficiency was below than 50% for all of the nutrients so we we analyze or we conclude that stress conditions help in the conjunction of nutrients to accumulate the compounds that is the estrogenin from the hematococcus pulvilis and also this results was evident with the extraction yield of the compound and we found that the bio2 compound concentration that was estrogenin lutein and beta carotenoid was higher with the high stress conditions that is a blue dark blue while also the fatty acid content was higher with the higher stress conditions while in the less stress condition the productivity of these bio2 compounds was very low as compared to the high stress conditions so also we analyze these result with the microscope image and the analysis of microscopic image are evident that the high stress conditions show that the high red cells in the in the picture and they contain the high red compound while in the seven days that the cells are very low while in the day 14 when we harvested the biomass the red cells was very high while with the less stress conditions we found that the red cells was very low and also the cell absorbance was as lower as compared to the high stress conditions that which reflected with the also the extraction yield as well as also the nutrient conjunction efficiency evidence so here i would like to share with you the second part of the our project so here we are working also for the supercritical fluid extraction of the bio2 compounds for a large scale for extraction because in the supercritical we we don't use any solvent and is give us the solvent free extract we only use the co2 as the solvent for the extraction of these compounds so firstly we optimize the results or like the experiments at the bench scale for extraction of bio2 compounds from the microalgae using supercritical fluid extraction and firstly we optimize the different free treatment conditions because we use different microalgae strains and that have different physiochemical properties and therefore it need to be optimized for individual microalgae for individual free treatment condition as well as also the extraction conditions so for pre treatment conditions we optimize biomass loading uh, rotation is and also the pre treatment time while for the optimization of bench scale extraction conditions we optimize co2 flow rate pressure temperature and biomass loading using the ultra hp plc and gc using the saponification and trial results at pilot scale so the pilot plant was located in our research center and we carried out activity also for the extraction of the bio2 compounds at pilot scales so here is the brief uh, algae stains that was proposed in the velumic project and uh, that velumic project is the european project is funded by horizon 2020 and i am a part of this project so in this uh, project we decided three microalgae strains that is dunaliella salina ranocrops virtiana and hematococcus pulvilis so firstly we optimize the pre treatment conditions for each microalgae strains then also the extraction conditions and after the extraction we found that the most of the biomass like for dunaliella salina this is a yellow biomass orange biomass colored into very light color so most of the pigments was extracted and here we can see these are the extract that contains a bio2 compounds and this is quantity is very low so this extract directly can be used in the nutraceutical sector 
and also we analyze the quantification of this extract using the turbo web and also the ultra hplc and gcfid so the i just going to show you the key results that we have optimized we use different conditions for each microalgae as i told you and we we work with the different pressure so firstly i would like to give you brief results of the dunalella selena so firstly we found that dunalella selena pretreated with the optimum condition and the extraction was carried out with the at 65 degree centigrade at 400 bar pressure with the co2 flow rate of 14.48 gram per minute and most of the uh, pigments or compounds was extracted which can be reflected from the exhausted biomass after the extraction so here we can see then the first extract the most of the extract was extracted extracted and the content is in the vial while in the second extract only the little bit extract was accumulated so also then in the second phase like for a hematococcus pulveris we found that the temperature and the pressure was similar to dunalella salina while the co2 flow rate have significant role in the extraction of astaxanthin from the hematococcus pulveris and also here we found that the most of the pigments or compound was extracted and the biomass turn into light color as in the brown color as we can see here and the most of the extract was collected in the first extract while also the other extract also contains a little bit of the extract because the dunella sorry the hematococcus pulveris have the hard cell wall as compared to the dunella salina and it's need a longer extraction time as compared to to dunella salina so here this this also can be reflected that the and uh, that the for nanocrystal grittana we found that the temperature was 65 degree while for the pressure was 250 bar and with the high the co2 flow rate was 14.48 gram per minute so here also we found that most of the compound was extracted and this is the extracted biomass so these results give us the indication that the for each microalgae different condition need to be optimized and for we then we validated these bench scale results at pilot scale so this is the overview of the pilot plant which is located in our research center and uh, this is the high view of the pilot plant and this is a co2 plant for the extraction and this is the extraction extraction vessel without cap this here is the extraction vessel and this is the wall for the extraction so here this is the video and maybe i will play it at the end of the my presentation so this is the we collect the extract in the solid form because in the extraction phase the co2 works in the liquid phase while in the collection of the collection of the extract we collect it in solid phase while after the few seconds the the solid phase the co2 disappear and we collect in the powder form or in the semi solid due to the availability of oils or fatty acids in the extract so here after i am showing you the third part of our project that is we extract the we use six microalgae strains for extraction of the different bioactive compounds that is sandesmus elmerisis dunalella salina nanoclotis species chloral velcris hemidogus pulveris green phase and red phase so firstly we extract the compound and we quantify and then prepare the extract and then we check the in vitro and in vivo firstly we check the in vitro and in antimicrobial activity of these uh, extract of six microalgae extract and we check with the fungal and anti plant uh, bacterial pathogens so we use four uh, fungal strains that is a penicillium digitorum and so on and also for a uh, bacterial strains bacillus subtilis protobacterium cartorum and pseudomonas syringes and we we use different method for a uh, in utero study that well diffusion method and disk diffusion method as well as growth dilution methods so here i would giving you the brief about the results of this so this was a in vitro test and we found that the extract of the dunalella salina was having the positive impact on the bacterial plant pathogens and then we demonstrated the potential of the dunalella extract 
except for uh, pseudomonas syringes and the in vivo conditions so this is the formulated extract that we prepare the extract with the different concentration of the bioactive compound concentration of the bioactive compound and then we test in the greenhouse with using the tomato plants so firstly we test the the potential of the extract six microalgae uh, biomass then we found that the dun extract of dun dunalella salina have a high potential for uh, plant bacterial disease then in in vitro condition then we demonstrated in vivo condition using the tomato plants so then also we test the potential of the extract on tomato fruit and also also on zucchini fruit so we found that after the inoculation of the dunalella extract we found that with the higher concentration of the dunalella extract uh, spray with the or injection of the extract in the zucchini we found that the zucchini was very fresh while with the positive control without the extract of dunalella salina we found that the zucchini was degraded after 24 hours the first picture is after 24 hours and then is 48 hours and also here is we see in the lower concentration of the dunalella extract with the 5 gram per liter the we here we can see that the there is the bacterial disease or spot of bacterial disease after 48 hour and this is a after 24 hours while with the higher concentration the the zucchini was very fresh so the results are evident that uh, that the extract of dunalella salina have significant potential for uh, anti microbial activity against the pseudomonas syringes uh, plant bacterial disease so here i would like to conclude about the that about my presentation that the nutrient and water recycling inhibit the growth of sandesmus elmerisis which resulted lower nutrient consumption efficiency and lutein production as we seen earlier in the results while during the growth phase of uh, sandesmus elmerisis a small scale cultivation system with the volume to surface ratio of 11.5 liter meter square with the vol working volume of 1.2 liter supported the higher biomass productivity while also showed the higher nutrient consumption efficiency while the higher or large scale cultivation system supported the higher extraction yield as well as lutein content in the sandesmus elmerisis while we found that the high stress condition that is the blue light with the surface of photobioreactor that was 2500 lux on the surface of photobioreactor that improved the accumulation of bioactive compounds in the hematococcus pulvilis and while the less stress conditions have the less effect on the accumulation of bioactive compounds while the brief results of the supercritical bench scale supercritical extraction demonstrated that the bench scale results can be can be demonstrated and can be or like uh, achieved at the pilot scales and we found that the in the bench scale and in the pilot scales the result was comparable also the extract of and the finally the extract of dunalella salina have higher antimicrobial activity among the six extract of the six microalgae strains so here i would like to give you the like future direction of research our research work so now we are implementing our uh, algal research with the uh, algal biotechnology with the molecular techniques for like different using different uh, approach for the enhance the accumulation of the bioactive compounds like nutrient deprivation approach genetic engineering media engineering and chemical modulators so these these approach could uh, change the metabolic pathway of, of microalgae and can enhance the accumulation of these bioactive compounds and these bioactive compounds then we extract with a green extraction unit extraction approach that is a so CO2 supercritical extraction and then it can be directly used in the nutraceutical and food sector also in even in the europe we found that there are several products that use the extract direct extract of microalgae for like the especially dunalella salina and also nanocolorsic grigliana for uh, reaching the epa content in the olive oil so this approach of this project also to demonstrate the the approach for the commercialization of the process and also we are implementing the genetic 
engineering tool for, for the uh, enhancing the better cross productivity in the tunnel and also we are trying to develop this dunalila selena in simultaneous production of beta carotenoid and astaxanthin using the genetic engineering approach so thank you very much for your kind attention and uh, now i would like to have your uh, questions welcome your questions thank you very much thank thank you so much sir so we have received number of questions here uh, yes. so the first question from the participant jyoti rawat is that which kind of biomass can give a good amount of lipid content extract that is from the wet algal biomass or dry biomass the the like is also based on the extraction which kind of the extraction process we used firstly so like the the lipid content in the biomass is the same the the moisture so the but if we have the lipid content can be reduced so it doubt for the to drying the wet biomass and also the also we have to focus that which kind of the lipid or fatty acid we have to focus like if we have to go for biodiesel production we have to use the chlorella species for the higher lipid productivity while we have to use the higher pufa or like epa dha bio two compounds then we have to select the nanochlorosis graditiana especially for high productivity of uh, uh, ep and dha compound okay sir so the next question is that uh, uh, what do you think about in vitro cultivation of the microalgae or for the anti antibacterial activity sir for microalgae sorry can you repeat your question uh what do you think about in vitro cultivation so in vitro cultivation like is also based on the final end product of the microalgae biomass that what we have the application if we have the application for biodiesel production or waste water treatment then we have to go for open cultivation system in the pond system or in the large scale cultivation like in the in the open cultivation area while we have to focus on the nutraceutical and pharmaceutical application of the biomass then we have to maintain the conditions for the food grade uh, conditions like we have to maintain the aseptic condition we have to control the uh, control the extra or uh, contaminants to we have to avoid the contaminants to to make the biomass more pure so our focus was to product produce the biomass for nutraceutical application so we are working in the closed system for uh, to avoid the further contamination of other microalgae or bacterial or other kind of the contamination and also we demonstrated that in the bench scale firstly like with the 1.2 liter to 28.8 liter then we have demonstrated pilot plant pilot scale in the cypress so here i also like i would like to as i mention earlier that i will play the video that uh, the for extraction that we when we collect from the pilot plant in the in the pilot plant so this is the so so this was a, the video for extraction at pilot plant so after that initial we collect the extract in the flask and it was in the solid form uh, semi solid and after the few seconds or minutes it uh, evaporated the co2 and we collect only the semi solid part or like the powder form of the extract thank you so much sir hello can you yes i am listening yes 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 sir sure. okay sir thank you so much sir thank you for your valuable words it was such an interactive session for us thank you so much sir
thank you very much to sarda university for giving this opportunity and also organizing this wonderful event in this uh, pandemic era so thanks to everyone to uh, participants and also to presenters and also to organizers thank you very much thank you so thank much you. sir thank you sanjeev thank you. thank you sir let's introduce our next speaker of this session dr subhashish datta dr subhashish datta is currently working as an assistant professor in department of biotechnology haldia institute of technology in haldia he has completed his phd from national institute of technology durgapur in the year 2018 his work domain is in bioprocess engineering and biochemical technology He has published many research papers in the peer-reviewed journal. He is holding one process patent and one AICTE Modro project. So we welcome you, sir, and we're looking forward for such a interactive words from your side. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, madam, and thank you, Sarda University. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Many many thanks uh, and regards to Sarda University and A MIT Aurangabad for organizing this. Uh, e faculty development program come workshop on waste to bioenergy so today in discussion and over this and my work on biohydrogen production from carbohydrate source and mainly on the hypothesis and uh, will be gone to the thermophilic facultative analog and uh, yeah you can see that uh, the emerging inner energy demand Uh, this is uh, one graph that is taken uh, from this OECD, which is Organization for Economic 